Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, today we are speaking about a topic which a lot of people, uh, I think, deal with either personally or with those around them, uh, and that is the topic of anger management. Uh, this is something that's extremely important for us to understand because the Prophet them told us the importance of controlling our anger. Uh, in one hadith, the Prophet them uh, asked his companions, uh, who is the strong person? And their response was very similar to maybe what, what our response would be, and that is they, they responded by saying that the strong person is the one who can wrestle the best. So they were uh, looking at it from uh, the physical strength. And the Prophet ﷺ responded and said, uh, no, the strong person is the one who can control himself in the fit of anger. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, was asked uh, or was, was giving advice to one of the companions. And he said, لا تغضب, لا تغضب, لا تغضب. Uh, do not get angry, do not get angry, do not get angry. Uh, and he repeated it many times. Now we can look at this advice of the Prophet ﷺ with regards to anger. In in these two uh, traditions, these prophetic traditions, these ahadith, and, and we can understand a couple things. First of all, do, do these ahadith mean that uh, anger, that we should never feel the the emotion of anger? And the answer is no. It isn't that we should never feel the emotion of anger, but the key is what we do with it. The key, because anger itself was actually put in us for a reason. So it's you know just similar to why you know we 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 spoke about before the 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 purpose of pain, for example. That pain isn't something that was an oversight on the on the on the side uh, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Audhu billah, Allah doesn't have any oversights. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a purpose for everything that he does. And similarly, anger is put in us for a reason. But the intent of anger uh, is is actually the opposite of how we end up using our anger. The intent and one of the intents of anger is actually so that uh, for a number of, of uses of the of, of, of anger, one is that, that anger should be used in order to protect the weak and the oppressed against an oppressor. Uh, if we see, see, when we see oppression, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in us that that's supposed to incite anger inside of us. Someone is being abused. Someone is being massacred. We see what's happening in Syria. We see what's happening in Burma. And these things are supposed to incite a feeling inside of us of anger. But now the question is, what is intended? What What is the intent of that 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 feeling and it should be motivating us to now protect the one who's being abused to protect the oppressed unfortunately uh what the way in which we actually use our anger is exactly the opposite we oftentimes use our anger instead of protecting uh, others instead of to protect the oppressed we actually use our anger in order to oppress and in order to harm others and and it's supposed to be uh, exactly the opposite. Another uh, reason or another use of of anger and how it can be channeled in the right way, uh, why we you know have this this emotion is that um, it's supposed to also be uh, sort of directed towards our own nafs. And when I say our own nafs, I don't mean you know that we have self anger in the sense that or, or self hate, but what I mean is against the lower part of ourselves. So when we find, for example, that we are unable to leave a particular sin, we are unable to to uh, you know sacrifice something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala, or we find ourselves that we are continuously repeating the same sin, or we're this should make us this in, should incite in us a a feeling of anger, and and that anger should be directed towards my own nafs, and in that way actually motivate me to stop committing that sin, to stop whatever it is that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, instead, we turn it um, again uh, upside down and we do the opposite. We use our anger 
in order to defend our own selves and we use it against others. And what we're really should be doing is directing it towards the lower part of our own selves. Uh, but instead, we use our anger to defend the lower part of our own selves uh, against others. <clears throat> now, speaking uh, about kind of the root of anger, and this is where I want to talk about anger management in a way where we get at the root of it. What is it that causes um, anger to be out of control, for us to be unable to control our anger or uh, for us to be unable to manage it. And I think before we can speak about managing anger, we need to talk about what, what you know, feeds anger and what causes anger at, um, at a root level. And when you look at the causes of anger, you will find that one of the main causes of anger and one of the main causes of uncontrolled anger is the need for control. It is the need for control. It's the feeling that I don't like to be to, to not be in control of this situation. I don't like to feel rather that I'm not in control because in reality, none of us are in control. We are not the ones in control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one in control. But we as human beings, we like to feel that we are in control. And those people who have more of that need to feel that they are in control will tend to also be those who uh, suffer more from from issues of anger management and, and, and have trouble more with controlling their anger. You'll also find that when you have to have that sense of control, you also will find that that will also cause you to get uh, angry more often and more quickly. So you'll be getting angry more quickly, getting angry more often, and also once you do get angry, uh, you have you know less ability to manage that anger and to control it. You you as soon as you enter into a situation where where one feels out of control that something is not happening that the way that they had intended or the way that they had wanted it to happen, and as a result of that, that makes us angry because we need to feel that things are happening the way we want them. Um, and exactly according to our plan. And the moment there's any, you know, um, sort of some t slight, you know, mo slight derivation from that, we become very agitated and very angry. So the, the cure to this root uh, of anger, and, and we'll talk about a number of the roots of anger, the, the cure to this root is that we need to let go of this need for control. We need to let go for the need to be able to dictate how every um, outcome happens, how, how every little aspect of our life needs exactly to be. We, we have to have the ability to let that go if we want to have a sense of um, more internal stability and not have this constant problem with, with anger. Uh, so the, the, the need for control, that's huge. And that's one of the biggest roots of anger. Uh, again, you'll find those people who are more controlling or who need that sense more of control tend to also, it's coupled with, with the the amount of anger and then also how often, uh, you know, this, this individual will get angry and how even little things will make that person angry because those little things also are not happening in the way that we had wanted them to happen. Uh, so this is why you'll f find, you know, maybe you'll see a situation, someone's getting really, really angry about something so small. Uh, and, it, and it has to do with the fact that even though it's small, I needed it to happen the way I wanted. I needed it to happen the way that I expected it to happen. And, and I need to feel in control of it, even if it's a small issue. And it will still and so it will therefore excite, ignite our anger. The second, I think one of the second main roots of anger uh, comes from expectations. Uh, certain uh, very high expectations. Uh, the more that we have high expectations of dunya, of that which is in the dunya, uh, whether it's other people or, you know, our job or career, we have very, very high expectations. And you will also find that those people who have a problem with anger 
or have a problem with uh, either controlling their anger or, or getting angry very often, they also tend to be people who have very, very high and often unrealistic expectations. And we can say that these expectations are unrealistic because anytime you're expecting a lot from dunya, uh, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. And in, in actually what ends up happening is you're setting yourself up to be very angry. Uh, when you are expecting something to be a certain way, and, and this is the sort of the, the problem with expectations um, whenever you expect from the creation or from dunya. Um, the, the problem with expectations is that the moment you expect something versus hoping for something versus praying for something, um, but the moment you expect something, you're actually setting yourself up for one of two outcomes. One is if you get that which you expect, you can't even really enjoy it. Um, you can't even really be grateful for it because it's what you expected. Um, I'm not. I'm not uh, getting up in the morning every day and and thanking God because the sun um, rose, right? Because I'm expecting it. Um, but you know, if it, if it was something that may or may not happen and I wasn't expecting it, then I might uh, really be thankful and grateful that I have light that day, right? But if it's something that you just expect that that's going to happen, and this is kind of, it, your expectation now sets the minimal, the sort of the minimum uh, acceptable outcome that you will you will even accept, right? That you'll even be okay with. And, and so I- even if you get that, well, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be grateful. You're just going to be neutral, right? Because you got what you expected. Yeah, I expected um, I was going to, you know, get up and 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 this was, you know, things were going to be a certain way, and and they happened that way. So, you know, uh, for example, um, I expect, you know, somebody is going to be a certain way with me um, when they are. It's not like I'm going to suppose that there's a really, really, really nice person, um, you know, your colleague, and every single day. Uh, they they get you coffee and they get you you know some some muffins and they leave it for you on your desk and and so over time every single day this person does this for you and so what happens is then you start to expect it right so what happens is you know weeks go by you know this person's still doing it so the next you know f- the first couple times you, you you might be really surprised and in fact the very first time that this person did this for you you you'll be really grateful and you'll be really happy uh and you'll say thank you right you'll say thank you many times and then maybe the second day again why is that the reason is you didn't really expect it it was it was it was surprising you didn't expect this was going to happen it was something that you know out of the blue so you're really grateful and and happy then over time maybe this person continues to do it every single day for weeks for months uh, maybe even for years, right? If you're really lucky, and and so what happens is, well, you know what? You're once you expect it now, you know, a couple months later, when you come and you find it at, on your desk, it's no longer, you know, thank you. It's well, this is what I expected, and you're, you know, you you drink your coffee. But what happens now? And this is where we'll we'll get into the second outcome, and this is where anger comes in. Now, what happens when it's not there, when the coffee isn't there, when the bagels aren't there, uh, what happens when that thing that you expected is not there, is not what you expected? This is where anger comes in. Uh, Because I expected something and expectations by definition are uh, sort of where I put the minimum, uh, you know, bar of, of what I'm going to be okay with. And so if something is below that, I'm going to be angry. Uh, and, and this is where we start to have a situation where it, it, a person who always has very high expectations and expects from everything and expects all the time. So what they're the, at best, because, you know, most of the time, if the, if, if the expectations are very high, things are not going to exceed them at best. Th- things will reach your expectations. And so at best, you'll be neutral. And at worst, and most often, you're going to be angry because most of the time, since you set your expectations so high and so unrealistically, and you're, you know, you have this sort of perfectionist, idealistic um, expectation of things. And again, that's different than hoping for things um, that, that because of that, most of the time, things are going to fall below your expectations. 
which then means most of the time you're going to be angry. Most of the time you're going to be irritated. And, you know, some level of anger is you're going to be feeling and externalizing because most of the time it's going to fall under this very high bar that you've set for yourself. And as a result, uh, this, this will be a person who very seldom shows appreciation and very seldom uh, is, you know, shows or feels gratitude. It's very difficult for this person to even feel gratitude, let alone show it. And instead, what, what, what this person tends to, to show most of the time is irritation and anger. And it has everything to do with, uh, you know, where they are placing their expectations and the fact that they are placing their expectations uh, so high and, and, and across the board all the time. I have an expectation of, of, of how long it's going to take to do this X, Y, and Z. And it takes two minutes longer, so I'm very irritated. I have an expectation that I'm going to be, um, you know, a, a person's going to do X, Y, and Z for me today. And, okay, they did it. Well, I'm not going to say thank you because I expected it. But if they don't do it or if they don't do half of it, now I'm very irritated or I'm very angry. And, and this, is, this is something that we, the, the, the solution to this, um, really comes at the root, and that's where I'm, where I'm the, putting the expectation itself. Uh, what are my expectations? Where am I putting my expectations? And um, you know, uh, again, we we, we want to talk about there is a difference, obviously, between putting our our hope, uh, having hope for something, and 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 wanting, uh, in hoping that something will be a certain way, and expecting it to be. Because when you hope for something and it does happen, you're extremely excited, right? You're extremely grateful because you really wanted this thing and it happened. But expecting is something different. Expecting is, is gets into the realm of entitlement, gets into the realm of this is what I deserve. And any time um, we, we, we get into that realm, it can be, it can be tricky. I will um, you know, put a side note here uh, to to make very clear that, of course, there are minimal. You know, there are there are definitely universals uh, in terms of expectations. For example, um, it, 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 as an expectation, I must be treated with a certain level of respect. Um, I cannot accept someone to to abuse me or to treat me in a certain way below that that level. So I, I want to clarify that that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that, that there are no expectations. I'm not saying that, you know, for example, we, one, uh, a person who gets married should expect that her uh, spouse will, will support her financially. This is one of the, the rights of a woman. Um, this is one of the responsibilities of the man is to financially support his family. This is an expectation, uh, which of course is, is a valid expectation. And if that's not happening, if, for example, the man decides that he'd rather, you know, just stay home and not look for a job, that, that, that obviously that's a, you know, a, that's not something that's acceptable. Um, one is not saying that, that we have no expectations. But what we're talking about here is yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put certain minima, minimums. Uh, yes, it's true that there are certain expectations that we cannot accept anything below. Uh, respect, uh, that you're treated in a certain way. You don't accept abuse. You don't accept somebody, um, you know, taking away your rights, uh, your God-given rights. But what we're, what we're speaking about today is, is something very different. And I think those who, who, who um, kind of have experienced this know, know what I mean. Uh, this is this is about a person who's not just expecting that they have their rights and the, that the the rights um, that given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala are ensured, but this is someone who who has expectations about everything all the time, and those expectations are not at the 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 level the minimal level that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has put, but rather they're up in the sky and they're 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 always up in the sky and for everything uh, it's this it's 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 actually more of a sense of entitlement that i deserve these things and anything below what i deserve uh, I'm going to be angry about and I'm going to fight about and I'm going to be irritated about. That's what we have to change. We have to change that that concept of of entitlement, that feeling of I deserve this. And I and um, once we do that, 
then we're able to get anger at, at, at its root, along with the, the need for control uh, and the, the expectations and having those expectations be un- unrealistic and, and also uh, it coming from a place of, of, of uh, this is what I deserve and, um, and, and a sense of entitlement. Uh, we will, inshallah, take a short break now. And returning, we will go ahead and take your questions about anger management. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. We are speaking today about the topic of anger and anger management. Uh, what are the roots of anger, and what are your questions regarding this important topic? Why is it important uh, to control our anger? What has the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, taught us about controlling our anger? And what are some of the actual purposes of anger itself? Uh, we have some questions in the chat box. Uh, one of the questions reads, My husband is a very sweet man, but with his um, but with his sweetness comes extreme anger problems. Allahun musta'an. He easily gets angry and raises his voice. And when he is really angry, he says very hurtful things, sometimes very demeaning and over very insignificant issues. Uh, you know, this is the thing about anger. Uh, it is, you know, with it is, it is, it is a problem. Uh, anger management is an issue that you can't solve for another person. And it's important, though, uh, if you are the victim of someone else's anger problem, the first thing that's important for you to understand is that it's not your fault. Uh, one of the the very common uh, sort of myths, or one one of the most common things that that a person with anger management problems will try to make those around them believe is that well it's because of you you made me angry uh you did this you and so the it's again it's it's because the 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 person is not owning up to the issue the person it, it comes again with one big package of entitlement self and uh, and and the sense of entitlement and that i'm not the one with the problem but it's you who's making me angry so it's important that you don't internalize that that you understand that it it isn't your fault it isn't because of you that 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 person cannot control their anger uh anger uh, anger management issues uh, are a problem that the person has who has anger management issues. It is not anyone else's problem that they have made them angry. And you'll and and as you mentioned here, uh, it'll be over insignificant issues, and it, it isn't it isn't your fault. So that's one of the most important things as a victim of of someone who has anger management issues to to understand. Don't that we you should not let it affect your 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 self esteem uh, or affect your your own self. Uh, image or or the idea of of where, you know your self worth in that you are not the problem you are not uh, what's causing it and that also means that you can't solve it for them uh, the anger management needs to be something that that the person themselves has to decide that this is important and this is something that I'm going to struggle to work on you know if any human being usually i uh, see this is the way that the human being is created allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he created the human being weak and so we have this weakness in our nature and we want the easy way out we always want the the shortcuts we want what's more you know what's what's more simple over what's more difficult and which one is easier when you get irritated or you feel anger inside of you is it easier to control it or is it easier to just externalize it and show no restraint and just yell or scream or, or whatever? And the answer is, of course, it's easier to show no control. It's, it's easier to show no restraint. Showing restraint takes effort, takes work. And so we human beings, we like to take the easy way out. 
except except when we're forced to take the harder route. And so it's important, and I would say that the 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 role uh, of the of this the the so called victim, the role of the one who is the victim of those who have anger management issues, their role is I would say twofold. One, realizing, like I said, realizing that it isn't your fault, that it isn't your fault that that person cannot control their anger. And second, not enabling them. I, I mentioned that you aren't able to solve it for them. You can't, um, you can't, you know, make it go away just like you didn't cause it. But at the same time, there is something you can do to help them and, and to, in, in, and to um, make it easier for them to get over their, their problem. And that is do not enable them. Do not enable them means don't accept it. Don't say it's okay that they can treat you however they want because they were angry. Don't just be passive about it, but rather um, by making it unacceptable to, to behave in that way and to act in that way, you are helping that person uh, because what you're doing is you're closing off that easier route of it's okay. It's okay to just blow up. It's okay to act however you want when you're angry. But by saying it isn't okay, you are helping that person to now take the, the harder route, but the higher route and the better route of restraining their anger. And, and one good example of this is how that person behaves with their boss uh, or, or someone in power or the police officer that stopped them when they uh, were giving them a ticket. I'm sure that that made this individual, you know, feel pretty angry inside. But that person who just got stopped by the police officer, even if he or she has an anger problem, he will not start throwing things at the police officer. He will not probably start, you know, swearing at the police officer or yelling at the police officer. And there's a reason why. He's the same person who is unable to control his anger at home. He's the same person who's unable to control his anger with his family or her anger with his fa with her family, but in this situation, he or she is controlling his or her anger. There is a reason for that. And the reason is it isn't an option. It isn't acceptable. And, and that this is a principle that this is unacceptable. As a result, that person who just got stopped by the police and is in a very um, enraging situation, I'm getting a ticket, I'm going to have to pay hundreds of dollars. This is not a happy occasion. And yet I restrain my anger. I restrain my anger and I, in, I, I engage in that, in that work that that is that is required to to hold down my anger. I don't throw things, I don't swear, I don't scream, but I'm restraining my anger. And this proves that I have the ability to do so. It proves that I can if I want to. I can if it's a situation where I feel that I need to. So what I am saying to you, if you are the victim of an anger management issue, then what you need to do is help that person by also making it unacceptable for it to happen to you, for it to happen to your family, that this behavior is not acceptable and that you won't um, enable this person by accepting this behavior and being passive about it, but being very clear in, in whatever way you need to, that this needs to change. Uh, that is how you help that person to take the steps necessary to control his or her anger. The next question that I received in the chat box says, um, brother and I uh, in turn get angry, especially when he says hurtful things to my mom. I feel like I live in the vicious cycle of anger. Any suggestions? Uh, you know, again, if, if the anger issue is in, is, is in your own self, I think that two of the best ways uh, to get at the root of anger are like we spoke about dealing with the need for control and dealing with the expectations. Now, if you are, if that isn't the issue, if you're dealing now with an actual situation, uh, as this person indicated of, of where you're, you're seeing someone being oppressed or you're seeing someone be hurt or harmed. This is like we spoke that one of the ben one of the uses of anger, one of the reasons why we have this emotion is so that we can be driven to help those who are oppressed and to help those who are being harmed. Uh, and so in this case, you want to channel your anger in, in a way that is, that is, that is actually 
effective, that is actually fruitful. If you're, if you're seeing something wrong happening in front of you or someone being abused or someone being mistreated and your response is just to become, you know, to blow up or to, to throw things or to scream and it, it, that, that, you know, way of channeling that anger is not going to be effective even to, to, to help that person. Uh, so what you need to do is be able to channel it in a wise way and it needs to be in control. Anytime anger is out of control, then you, you, you need to realize that it's the anger who's in charge. Uh, you're no longer in control of your own self and you never want to be in that situation. Uh, there's a reason why we're not allowed to, 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 um, take intoxicants. The reason we can't take intoxicants is because then, you know, if you drink or you're drunk or you're, or you're high, you are no longer in control of your own self. You're no longer in control of your own behavior. Uh, you can no longer reason. Uh, and that reasoning and that ability to control our behavior is what makes us human. It's what makes us different than animals. Animals don't have that ability. And when we become in that, when we become that way, when we become unable to control our own selves, and able to reason, we become like animals and we have to rise above that. That's our humanity, that we are the ones in control. We don't let, we don't let our anger control us. We don't let our desires control us. And so it's very, very important um, because, you know, subhanAllah, sometimes when someone is in the fit of anger, it's really as if they are impaired, um, as if they are high, as if they are drunk, that people can be drunk with anger. And, and, and a lot of when you look at the 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 types of horrific things that happen and that human beings do to each other, so much of it is driven by what? It's driven by, by this emotion, by this by anger. Anger is it can be very, very destructive. So I would advise you and myself to really look internally if if we ourselves are dealing with this with this disease of the heart, if we ourselves are are dealing with this problem see it as a destructive force and understand it's like a fire that can burn us and those around us. Nobody wants to burn themselves and their family. We need to be very keen and very, uh, it, it needs to be a priority for us that we don't burn ourselves and burn our family. So if we are struggling with this, with this issue of anger, it should be very important to us to find out how to control it. Uh, anger, realize again, anger is the cause of so much, uh, so much uh, pain, so much bloodshed is, 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 del is, is caused by anger, murder. I mean, people can, the, the level that, that people can go to um, and, and the types of actions that people can, can engage in that are driven by anger are, are horrific. So we should be very afraid of, of this, this, this fire of being, uh, it being out of control. Uh, again, you know, um, how you deal with the issue, uh, if someone is being oppressed or someone is saying hurtful things, it is, it is all about how you respond. It is all about how you're channeling that anger, even if that anger is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is such thing as anger for the sake of Allah. When we see someone doing something displeasing to Allah, when we see the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not being fulfilled, when we see someone being oppressed, that should make us angry. And that is anger for the sake of Allah. But most of our anger, even when we claim that it's for the sake of Allah, is really for the sake of our nafs. And, and that's what we have to really work on. Even though... Our anger may actually be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be channeled in the correct way, in the way that is most pleasing to Allah. Because if, if it really is for Allah, then we need to channel it in the way that is pleasing to Him. And as the Prophet sallallahu said, the one who is strong, the one who is the most strong, is the one who can control himself in the fit of anger. It has nothing to do with physical strength. You can lift all the weights in the world and still be the weakest person uh, because true strength, as the Prophet ﷺ taught us, is in being able to control ourselves in the fit of anger. It is in being able to really um, you know, exemplify that humanity that I am in control of myself, myself, my nafs, uh, my desires, my anger are not in control of me. Uh, so we are taking more questions on the chat box. And um, inshallah, what, what I will do now is go ahead and take a break. And you guys can go ahead and keep putting your questions and your uh, reflections in the chat box. And we'll return after this short break. 
with your questions on anger management. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. We are taking your questions today on the topic of anger management. And we have a question in the chat box that says, What does Qur'an and Sunnah say about ways to control anger? Uh, now, there is a number of uh, different advice that the Prophet ﷺ has given us uh, with regards to anger. One of them, the Prophet ﷺ told us that if we get angry and we are standing, that we should sit. And if we are sitting, then we should lay down. And by doing this, by changing our position, uh, basically, you know, changing the situation, changing the environment, changing your own state physically will help to change your state internally also a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim uh, seeking refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan a lot of anger is from the shaitan a lot of anger is also from the nafs so sometimes uh, for example we find in ramadan we're still getting angry right uh, this is from the, our own self our own nafs and our own attachments and and um you know for example the attachment to to control, to feeling that we need we need control. Uh, the own, sometimes it, it has to do with our ego. Again, this is all our own self. We can't just blame that on shaitan. But shaitan also in, excites and, and ignites anger and makes it worse. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for refuge from the shaitan. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim and another advice that we're given by the Prophet وسلم, is to make wudu. That making wudu also can can calm anger. And, um, and and these are different ways that we can, once we get angry, uh, we can we can uh, address it. But 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 what I also wanted to emphasize a lot of this and kind of devote a lot of this show to was was not just a cure, but prevention. Uh, as we know, prevention is better than cure. And so if we can prevent the anger from being ignited again and again and so intensely, then that's that's easier than trying to cure it once it is ignited. So we, we've been speaking thus far about ways to prevent anger or to reduce anger in, in ourselves, uh, such as you know getting at the roots, uh, root of anger by letting go of the need to control every situation and the need to control every aspect of the situation. And secondly, uh, by, by managing our expectations and not having these high, high expectations all the time uh, across the board and from, from everyone. And, and by doing those two things alone, that will significantly uh, reduce the amount of anger, the intensity of anger, and how often we're getting angry. If we accept that we are not the one in control and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control, we don't need to control every small aspect of the situation. And similarly, we don't have to have such high expectations. This life and everything in it is by definition imperfect. If we expect it to be perfect, well, guess what? We're always going to be upset because it isn't perfect and you're expecting something that isn't. And and so you're definitely going to be, you know, consistently upset, angry or sad or disappointed. Another question that we got uh, a number of people asking is when you are the one dealing again, you're the victim of the person who with anger management issues. Some people, um, some, one person spoke about about uh, their parents, uh, a parent in fact, uh, or a spouse, and when and and they ask, they're asking, uh, how do you, for example, um, make it clear that it's not acceptable? Um, and then one person uh, indicated that when they try to say it's not acceptable, the other person justifies and, and it actually makes it worse, and and it, um, it makes them more angry. So to address that issue, uh, when you're trying to address uh, any important issue. The first rule is don't do it while a person's angry. 
Uh, that's that's just key. You don't try to tell a person while they're in the fit of anger, hey, you really shouldn't be angry right now and, and everything. You're, because what that really does is it, it actually has the opposite effect of putting fuel to fire. Uh, and it, 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 what it does is if someone is very upset and if someone else is telling them in the fit of their anger, uh, you have, you know, you're, you're being ridiculous or you have no right to be uh, angry and this is not a big deal. It, it, you'll find that that actually makes the person more angry. And the reason is that they're not feeling validated and they're feeling like, um, you know, that it's you when you're upset about something, you usually want validation. So I think that that's you know, one is not saying that you need to validate anger and or or validate the the way it's being expressed. In fact, I'm saying the opposite. You should you should not enable it. However, it isn't the time uh, in order to discuss it or or to invalidate it or validate it. The best thing to do is to be quiet at that point. Uh, that while a person is their anger is out of control, the best thing to do is to not respond and to and to and to be quiet. Uh, if if you respond uh, or if you try to to discuss at that point, it'll just tend to uh, ignite the issue more, as the sister mentioned or, or the brother mentioned. And uh, so, what we need to do is at that point, you you know, you you stay quiet until the person calms down. Maybe the next day, maybe you you know, it's extremely important. One of the most important uh, prerequisites of a of a successful conversation uh, is finding the best time. You have to find an appropriate time when the person is not angry and especially not when they're in the fit of anger, when they're not too tired, when they're not too hungry, um, you know, find a good time where you can really sit down and talk uh, about about this issue and and maybe find the best method. One thing that I have found in my experience is sometimes speaking face to face is the best method, and sometimes it isn't. I found that sometimes writing um, is is actually a, sometimes a, a better method of expressing your your feelings. And in fact, there are books that give you ways to express uh, negative emotions in such a, a way that it does not make the other person shut down and become defensive and angry. Uh, for example, there's a book called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And this, although this is a, a, a relationship book about uh, men and women in, and marriage, however, uh, there is a, a part of that book, which you can look up online, called The Love Letter. And this is basically a template. Uh, it's a template of how you can actually structure your words, how you can actually write your words down in such a way to express something that hurts you, to express some negative emotion, but in such a way that it does not make the other person defensive. It does not make the other person angry. And it's actually very effective. It's a very effective way of communicating negative emotions in order to, uh, to to actually have a positive response. And so I recommend something like that. This this again, the book is uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. It's by John Gray. And in that book, there is something called the love letter. And it's actually something that you can use for for anyone uh it doesn't need to be a spouse it's just called the love letter but it's all it all it is is it's a template it's a structured template of how to communicate negative emotions it can it can be used for a colleague it can be used for any anybody uh it's it's a really a, a good way to give you direction in terms of how you express your feelings because the way in which we communicate is key it's key we could one person can say the same thing in one way and the the person responds positively. Another person, uh, you know, you can say something actually to the same person. In fact, uh, you can say it to the, to that person in one way, and they respond positively. Say the exact same meaning, but in another way, and maybe with another tone, and maybe with a different sentence structure, and they respond completely opposite in a negative way. It's extremely important how we communicate these feelings and when. We communicate these feelings, picking an opportune time, uh, not when they are in the fit of anger, not during the argument, but a time when 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 things are calm and things are good and then communicating it in the right way. Uh, again, I recommend oftentimes it actually may be better to write it down uh, versus especially if you know that if if it, if it's a verbal conversation that the person will will probably blow up or or, or get very angry and and start maybe attacking uh, verbally attacking you then then in that case it, it may be best to write it down and and to give it to the to that person 
uh, you know, subhanAllah, we have so much technology now. You can email it and you can text. You know, you don't, we have ways of communicating now, which doesn't have to be so, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, where, where the person can, can feel uh, defensive because you're not in their face. It's, it gives them sort of a space to read what you have to say and, and not feel so attacked because you're not in their face. Well, Allah Ta'ala Alam, sometimes it's best uh, in person and sometimes it, it isn't. So asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for help, making dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, uh, asking Allah to, 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 to help that person, to help you, to, to enable you to, to deal with it in the best way and to, and to, to help that person to, to change this habit of theirs. It's it's a big problem that we have um, in our in our society and in our communities, and it's something we have to deal with because anger can be very very destructive. Uh, it can cause uh, so much so much harm to oneself and to one's family. Uh, so more questions in the chat box. Um, <clears throat> again, someone saying when I try and tell her calmly that it is not an issue to get angry over. She simply disagrees and gets more angry and crazy. Exactly. Uh, like, like I was saying that when you, uh, you don't pick the right time because you're telling her that this is not an issue to get angry about while she's already angry, it, it's going to it oftentimes make the person more angry. Uh, so just staying quiet is the best way while the person is angry and then addressing it when the person calms down in the best time and in the best way again the question of how do we uh, let the person know it's not acceptable um, the issue with me is that being the daughter-in-law I'm expected to do stuff in a specific way I'm always so conscious as to what I'm doing right or wrong uh, and, and this may be also an issue of, of needing a sense of control probably uh, you're maybe you've become more conscious of what you're doing because you've been criticized, and because of that, you need to feel that everything is going a certain way, or that you're not making a mistake, or or that you're in control because you don't want to consistently be criticized. Uh, I think you know addressing the issue. What is what is causing the anger to begin with? And I think that uh, this this is being led back to the the feeling of being. Um, criticized a lot or, or ex having a lot of expectations of you. If there's any way that you can address that with your husband or, or, or with your in-laws or have your husband address it with your in-laws in a way that's constructive, uh, then that would be great. If it's something that you cannot change and it's something you just have to accept, then what we need to do is is work on our own selves in terms of dealing with it, in terms of being patient and um, you know, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to be able to deal with it in a way that's most pleasing to him and, and in a way uh, of ihsan, inshallah. Uh, someone says, I'm continuously asking a person to correct something, but he is doing it. Uh, I think maybe it's meant that he's not doing it. That makes me irritate and I shout and I don't like it. I want to control it. I'm fa I'm failed. Uh, secondly, when I see my close one acting irresponsible every day and he is not trying even to be responsible, I can't control my anger. What should I do? Uh, the answer uh, to begin with is let go. Uh, you can want something to be done a certain way. You can want someone to act a certain way, but that is very different than being uh, dependent on it, of being attached to it in the sense that it must happen or else uh, you will uh, X, Y, Z, you will, you will be devastated or you will be very angry or you will do this and that. And this is where we have to be able to not, we have to be able to let go of things. And when I say let go, I don't mean that you're not going to care uh, about what this person is, how this person is acting. You continue to care and you continue to advise and you continue to, to help them. But at the same time, if you're too attached to it happening a certain way, can you imagine what would have happened to the Prophet ﷺ if if he, uh, you know, if he just was so dependent on his uncle becoming Muslim? Of course, he wanted his uncle to be Muslim. Of course, he wanted his uncle to say La ilaha illallah on his deathbed, but he didn't. And of course, it caused sadness. It did cause it, it, the Prophet ﷺ. Of course, he felt sad about this, but it it wasn't something. 
that he was his his mission his life his 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 sanity was not dependent on it and and so although it made him sad he was able to continue what he needed to do and and to and to take it in a way uh, where it didn't uh, change his his state internally in the sense of making him angry or making him give up. Uh, but you see, so this is the balance we have to have where we don't need, you know, the Prophet ﷺ was not someone who had the need for control, right? He he wasn't this type of person. And so there were some who would believe in him and some who would not. And although he loved them and he wanted for them to believe, he didn't need that sense of control. But if you look at another leader, who needs that sense of control, as soon as that person feels that they don't have that sense of control, maybe people aren't listening to them, or maybe people are not doing things exactly in the way that they're ordering those things to be done, or that they want those things to be done, they can't handle it. They get very, very upset, very, very angry, and maybe there's huge consequences for that. And that's because that there is that very strong need for control. There's that very strong attachment to feeling that I say something, it needs to be done in this way. Uh, and that's really the root of the problem. If you're worried about this person, continue to advise, continue to, to make dua. But the, the idea that, that it's going to make you so angry, uh, sometimes the real root of that is, is my own ego. Uh, I'm saying something and it's not being listened to. I'm saying something and, and, and this person is not respecting what I'm saying. So it, it actually becomes more of a concern of my own self and my own ego than it is what is actually happening to that person. So those are just some things to, to think about in that regard. Um, someone says, what can we do about a brother in late 20s who takes out anger physically on mom when things don't go his way? He pulls my mom's hair till her hair comes out. And yesterday he broke down two doors in the house. Suggestions help. Um, I would say that this is something that probably needs professional help. Uh, this is, um, v you know, this is a very serious, destructive uh, sort of um lack of, of, of anger management. And I would say that if, if it's, if it's coming to a point where he's actually uh, physically hurting your own mother and breaking things, I would say that it, it's, it's extremely important that you, that you uh, do receive professional help for that. And it may be caused by uh, some sort of um, issue that, that he has, whether it's bipolar or, or other issues that, that sometimes can cause this type of very extreme behavior. But it is important that you, that you probably receive professional help uh, for that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on you and your family. Um, you know, for, for cases where it, perhaps it may not be a medical issue, but, but maybe the child is, is treating the mother, uh, you know, acting out uh, when he's angry or when she's angry, it's very important that the mother does not enable this behavior. The mother has to put her foot down and not uh, allow this, this, this to happen. Sometimes mothers, because of their care for their child, uh, you know, they kind of, they don't want to say anything or, oh, they were just angry, you know, and they kind of let it go. But when you do that, you're, you're hurting your child because you're not, you're not, you're not stopping this behavior. And this behavior is destructive first and foremost to that child. Uh, this is what we have to really take home from this, from this discussion, inshallah. And that is anger. Uh, it's going to burn you first. Uh, anger, the, 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 you know, there's this saying that says that you are not punished for your anger, you are punished by your anger. So the first person who really suffers from this anger problem is one's own self. It, it burn, It's like a fire inside of you. And so you're the first person who burns uh, and then it spreads to others, but you're the one who suffers most. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to control our anger and to be among those people who the Prophet said are the strongest of people. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته